From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, a member of the I Hear Everything Podcast Network. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. Here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss navigating a cookie-less future and programmatic advertising. Joining us is Eric Wheeler, who's the CEO of 33 Across, which enables leading global advertisers, platforms, and publishers to move past cookies and reach consumers in a simple, fair, and transparent manner. Yesterday, Eric and I talked about preparing for a cookie-less world, and today we're going to continue the conversation talking about how marketers should approach programmatic advertising. All right, here's the second part of my conversation with Eric Wheeler, the CEO of 33 Across. Eric, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Thanks, Ben. Excited to be here and to continue the conversation. Excited to continue to wrap. Yesterday, we talked about the fundamental shift for marketers and our access to data and how it's changing. We no longer can rely on third-party cookies. Google has started the deprecation process. So that means a lot of the advertising strategies that we were relying on, specifically in programmatic advertising, are changing or going away. We used to be able to buy access to the type of consumers we want by going into a DSP and saying, here's a cookie, here's a list of users, go find more people that look like them and display our ads all over the open web. What's the plan? What's the play moving forward? How should marketers be approaching programmatic advertising as we deal with the deprecation of third-party cookies? You know, I think what's really interesting is that, as I mentioned yesterday, the view moving from fossil fuel-driven vehicles to electric, these are big shifts and you have to generally buy a new car, right? That sounds expensive. It can be incredibly expensive and depending on how cold it is, take a long time to charge depending on where you live. One of the things that's interesting about us is that we've kind of gone right down the middle. And what we've built is a way in which the existing programmatic ecosystem can continue to operate with just an easy upgrade to your existing fossil fuel, to your existing programmatic stack. We have, without going into the details too much, we've enabled you to kind of turn your car from a just a regular gasoline car to a hybrid. So with our integrations and what we've done is integrated with the largest demand side platforms and the largest supply side platforms. And through our technology called Lexicon, we now have built a cookie alternative that enables all of this programmatic to continue to work at an incredible scale. I don't know much about cars. I drive a 1994 Ford Explorer. I actually had the same car in high school. My parents sold it and I went and bought the exact same make year model trim kit. It is identical to my car in high school and it's got near 200,000 miles on it. And my dream is when the engine inevitably goes kaput, I'm going to swap that engine out with an electric engine. And what I'm hearing from you is we're going through that phase right now, but it doesn't seem like there's a way to swap out a battery for a gas tank. Tell me a little bit more about making that fundamental shift. Let's get a little nerdy here and talk to me about how you can still do the type of personalized tracking and ad delivery without using the same type of fuel, without having a gas tank. So I think the big point about a third-party cookie was it did allow you to do things like frequency cap, measure, and build audience segmentation, right? We've now built that capability without the cookie, and we've done it on an alternative technology we call Lexicon that allows you to get to pretty close to cookie level accuracy while still without any PII, without knowing anything about the consumer, and of course, respecting that user's privacy choices through the entire program. It's a little less accurate than a cookie, probably 85% accurate to a cookie. But what it does give you is the ability now to reach all of the programmatic landscape because most of programmatic today has been focused just on the cookie inventory, which we talked about yesterday was today only about 50% of the open web. Now you'd be able to get to 100% of the open web. And many of those places are great content environments with very light ad load. 
my understanding, and maybe this is just the term, well, you drop a cookie on someone, right? As they visit a site, you drop the tracking cookie into their browser, and now you have access to data and behaviors that you want to be able to collect. And part of the benefit of this type of technology is that it's been around forever and the advertisers have cookies on everybody and these huge audiences. When we're moving to a new technology like Lexicon, which 33 Across has developed, isn't part of the problem just getting the non-cookie cookies, what I called brownies yesterday, like on the devices, having the audience size? How do you get around that sort of scope? It's taken a long time. By having relationships like 33 Across, we have relationships with 800,000 websites globally. You know, we're 190 countries and territories. We have direct to publisher relationships. So that allows us to use Lexicon to build a cookie alternative and to keep that server side so we can make sure that that is happening in a way that is, as we talked about yesterday, reliable, transparent, immediate, and respectful of consumer choices, which really hasn't been the case for most of the cookie world today. It's always been fraught with issues. All right. So for the media buyers out there that have been reliant on programmatic advertising for the last, I don't know, decade, decade and a half, we're making this shift and there's these new technologies like Lexicon. Is there a different media buying strategy? Are we going to different sources to buy our advertising? Are we asking our DSPs to move towards cookie programs? What is the strategy or the need to's for the media buyers, the advertisers to be able to continue to be successful? We have done a lot of the hard work to build the plumbing into those most loved and used demand side platforms that do the bidding and set the advertising strategy as well as integrating into the exchanges, the SSPs, the Magnites and the Pubmatics. So it's already done and plumbed. The strategies a marketer and a media buyer need to think about is thinking about what kind of environment they want to advertise on. Do you want to advertise on a cookie browser or a cookie less browser? And the reason why I say that is, and you wouldn't normally do that because you've never really had that choice before, but they have a dramatically different price. The open market, it's like the difference between gold and silver. The market price for those impressions is dramatically different, yet the quality is the same. And many times the cookie list impression is actually better quality. It seems like the debate here is, do you want 100% of the universe at 85% of the accuracy so you get more scale and less precision? Or do you want to fight with more people bidding over the same impressions as they dwindle and get smaller and therefore get more expensive? Am I reading it the right way? You are. And in fact, that's what's going to happen. As the cookies continue to dwindle, you're going to see the price of cookie inventory continue to go up. An impression that used to cost $3 is going to four to five because of scarcity. Yet there's a much larger, soon to be, now about a 50% audience today of inventory that's as good and lower price. So in that kind of red ocean, blue ocean, we're seeing win rates on cookied impressions. This is advertising bidding and then win rates, you know, in the two, three, four percent range that you'll win a bid three, four percent of the time on a cookied impression today. In cookie less, you can win 25, 30% of the time. So it's a much, much less competitive market for quality. Red ocean, blue ocean. I think what you're saying is there's green grass in the cookie-less field, <laughs> which, I don't know, maybe you want to eat grass instead of cookies. We're all turned into cows. All right. So before I let you go, give me a couple of quick takeaways here. For the marketers that are not specifically programmatic advertising specialists, but those that are media buyers or that are promoting their in-house brands, what are the couple things that we need to do to be successful this year in buying our inventory? First thing, you should start planning and testing now. As I mentioned today, 50% of the open web is cookie-less and you can be testing and really proving out those programs today. Second, I think you should lean into your agency and your DSP technology partnerships to start and to test that, to track and scale those programs. Talk to them about what integrations they have, where they are, and make it clear that you want to be targeting the cookie-less environment. And the third is, in general, digital marketing, I believe, is it's like marketing in a mudslide. Everything's moving. The ground's moving. So you've got to set up small, scalable programs that you can measure and deliver against stable footing with great outcomes as you get through the next two, three, four quarters in 2024. 
was it Teddy Roosevelt? Never waste a good crisis. Maybe Winston Churchill. Somebody really important and really famous said never waste a good crisis. And this seems very akin to that. We're losing access to a tracking methodology that we've relied on for decades, which means there's lots of opportunity with new tracking solutions to be able to find better, cheaper, more effective inventory. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Eric Wheeler, the CEO of 33 Across. If you'd like to hear more from Eric, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter. His handle is Eric Wheeler, E-R-I-C-W-H-E-E-L-E-R. Or you can visit his company's website, which is 33across.com. That's 33across.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even apply to be a guest speaker on the MarTech Podcast. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly on LinkedIn. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.